May God bless you, brothers and sisters. Such a great joy to greet you all. It's so wonderful that you're paying close attention to the reflections from all of our brothers and especially from our sister Maria Luisa, all of her reflections. Yes, brothers and sisters, through Sister Maria Luisa, through our brothers, if we take all of these reflections, all of these titles, they give us a beautiful result to be the house of God through the reflections and all of their titles, topics that edify us, topics that exhort us, topics that comfort us. All of these topics are for us to be the building of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, better men, better women, for the work, the task that has been entrusted to us to be spokespersons, witnesses of His power. Brothers and sisters, there are topics that are strong, but no, brothers and sisters, let us not see it that way. Let us not feel this way. It is the Word of God. It is for salvation. It's for, the, for eternal life. It's for prosperity. Let us not look the things of God in this way. Let us see it as a blessing, as Psalm 94 states. It states, verse 12, Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. Brothers and sisters, being admonished and being corrected and receiving advice is all part of our spiritual life. What our brothers do, what our sister Maria Luisa does, is also that a house, a building may be formed in us so that the Spirit of God may dwell within, so that we may be better men and women for our God. Holy buildings founded upon our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the rock. The Apostle Paul wrote, saying that he, as a wise master builder, and that is what, that's, that's the goal, that's the, the work for these wise master builders may build within us hearts that are clean, beautiful temples for our God and for the Spirit of God to be poured in our hearts. And as the Apostle Paul mentioned to Galatians in one of his verses when he said, Until Christ is formed, in the hearts of men and women. That is that beautiful work of my brothers and our sister as wise master builders, building souls for eternity. But we must love. We should love God's correction. It is part of our spiritual life. The Word of God, when it is ignored, it offends. It makes the person feel bad. When we are unaware of the things of God and our brothers preach, we think that they're speaking against us. Oh, they're saying that, he's saying that against me. He's insinuating things about me. Let us never accept it in this way because this does not benefit us. This does not build us. This shows that there's pride in us and that we are not going to let somebody twist our arm and part of the expression, we don't want to give in 
We want to show that we have our personality, our own opinions, our pride. But that's not the case, brothers and sisters. We ought to let ourselves be led. I want to remind my brothers and sisters that speech from our Lord Jesus Christ when he preached about the Beatitudes, talking about the meek, the poor in spirit, the humble, those who mourn. These are the people who follow him. And this is what we must love and appreciate. We cannot reject a reflection whose title is a little harsh. No, no, no. That is part of it. it. It's better to be corrected now and not later. Not in eternity. For example, when Paul judged someone in the Spirit there in Corinthians chapter 5, 1 Corinthians regarding a displeasing behavior he states deliver such a one to Satan so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord because of the magnitude the gravity of the sin that decision was made but there was a beautiful purpose to it, which was the salvation of the person. He was going to suffer, he was going to cry, he was going to mourn, but the results were going to be for all eternity. Salvation, the salvation of his soul. This is what our brothers desire and our sister to build these hearts for the glory and the honor of our God let us pay close attention and let it be like when Peter went to the house of Cornelius that while he was speaking to them it states that the Holy Spirit manifested himself greatly in those who were paying attention let us be like them paying attention in our hearts and happily receiving all of those corrections, that admonishment, whether it's through the internet or when our churches are once again opened, let us never resist because we are never going to win anything. We might even lose our salvation because as... The Apostle Peter said to the Lord, To whom shall we go? I mean, after this salvation, who can offer us salvation? What congregation offers this salvation? Or where has God to offer us this salvation? We cannot give credit to our pride. Instead, we must humble ourselves and allow ourselves to be taught, to be guided. And I remind you, he who humbles himself will be exalted. Therefore, all of these topics from my brothers, all of these corrections from our sister Maria Luisa, the leader of the church, all of this is as our sister Highlighted once, it's like a scalpel in our hearts, removing those rough edges, cleansing our hearts so that we may be saved. That is the great task of our brothers and our sisters. And that's why we should love correction. We should embrace it. We should receive it. As the Lord said in Proverbs, in chapter 1, for example, he would say, Turn at my rebuke, surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words, my knowledge known to you. I will give you wisdom, etc., etc. 
Therefore, there's a beautiful purpose to all these messages. They are all part of our spiritual life. For example, in Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 5 is very interesting, but I'm going to read a few verses only. It states that after rejecting or hating wisdom, instruction, admonishment, it states in verse 11, and if you don't accept, then this is what you're going to suffer. It says, and you mourn at last, verse 11, when your flesh and your body are consumed. Verse 12, and say, how I have hated instruction and my heart despised correction. How sad that when he had the opportunity, when... It would have been better to humble himself and accept. Instead, what he did was oppose it and go or leave the congregation. This is not what David did. David was admonished by God through the prophet Nathan. David made a mistake, a very displeasing mistake in the sight of God. And Nathan uh, expressed a parable to him. And David said, Such a person had to be harshly reprimanded. And he told him, Well, that person is you. And David, it was beautiful. It was truly beautiful. That unconditional love for God because he opened his heart. He realized that he had made a mistake and he humbled himself. But well, he accepted that correction as it states in Psalm 94 verse 12, Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord. He accepted that instruction or that discipline. And he lost a blessing of great sentimental value. It was his child. He lost him, but that made him a distinguished man in the sight of our God. And even now, till this day, in the sight of all of those who love the Lord. It also states, and there's a proverb in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. It states, how does it go? It states, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction, he who turns their back to correction, he who feels like he's better than everyone else, it states he is stupid or we could say ignorant. How sad, brothers and sisters. How sad that it is true that many people, when you correct them, even when the Holy Spirit does it, they don't agree with what the Lord made them see and they, they reject that prophecy. No, we must love it all, brothers and sisters. We must receive it all. We must appreciate it all. It is all part of our spiritual life. How beautiful it is to be corrected by our God. How sad it is to hate or reject the advice of our God that He gives us through His ministers, through the Holy Spirit. That is sad because it will not be for salvation but for condemnation. All of these topics from our brothers, from our sister. This is for our growth. These are true, wise master builders who cause the Lord of glory to be forged within us. As Paul said to the Galatians, until Christ is formed in their hearts. That was their task and that is the task that 
our brothers and our sister uh, do for all of us to be blessed by the God of heaven who is blessed forever and ever. O oh God of glory, let your power be poured. Let your Holy Spirit be poured like on that day when Peter exhorted or taught in the house of Cornelius and the Holy Spirit was poured upon all of those who were paying attention. Let your spirit be also be poured in these times, your power, O oh Lord. Glorify yourself in the midst of your people. May my brothers and sisters, by paying attention to the reflections, may receive your grace, your glory, may cover us for healings, for deliverance. The power of the Holy Spirit in our brothers and sisters. Yes, O oh Lord, I pray to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen.